we're going to take a look at some of those cool polygons you don't often get to talk about. A polygon, why is it called a polygon? In Greek, poly means many and gon means side. So polygon is actually any of the different shapes that you can have, any of those many different shapes. If someone ever asks you how many sides does a polygon have, you can even say to them as many as you want. It's the name for all of the different shapes. Let's take a look at some of the coolest types of polygon. The ones that I won't really focus on in other videos because they're quite rare. The first one would be a rhombus. What's interesting about a rhombus? A rhombus has all equal sides, kind of like a square. So this side is equal to that side, which is equal to that side, and this is also equal. But even more than that, all the sides are parallel in pairs. So this side with an arrow, an arrow shows parallel, is parallel to this side. And the side at the top with a double arrow is parallel to the side at the base. That might make you curious about, well, what's the difference between a rhombus and a parallelogram then? Because a parallelogram is all, the, is all parallel sides. Parallelogram, quite hard to spell. Well, a parallelogram does have parallel sides, but all the sides are not equal. As you can see, we have two longer sides which are parallel, and two shorter sides, which are also parallel. But all the sides are not equal, as in a rhombus. What's this shape to the right? The shape to the right is a kite. And what is cool about a kite? A mathematical kite, unlike a real kite, which you can fly. What's cool about a kite is its equal sides. On the top left, you have a side which is equal to the top right. The bottom left is equal to the bottom right. Why did I do a double line on the bottom and only a single line at the top? That's just to show that the top left is only equal to the top right, not the other two at the base. So double lines are equal and single lines are equal. That's a kite, a rhombus and a parallelogram. But there's always been one shape since secondary school it's always intrigued me about it's what it is and where it comes from and it always had such a cool name can you guess what this shape is called some of you are probably already screaming out an answer this is indeed an arrowhead which I guess is named because you can put it in on top of an arrow and it's shaped just like what is put on top of an arrow an arrowhead can, if it's a regular arrowhead, have some interesting properties, which would be that this bottom side is equal to the bottom side on the right, and the top left is equal to the top right. Apart from that, though, the coolest thing is its shape and its name. It's an arrowhead. All of these shapes so far have been quadrilaterals. Why are they called quadrilaterals? They're called that, and let's italicize it because it's so interesting, it is because quad means four, and all of these sides, all of these shapes have four sides. We're going to now briefly look at shapes with more than four sides, so shapes which are not quadrilaterals. The first of these would be a pentagon. As you might know, oh, I didn't want it filled in, there we go. As we might know, oh, we could check out some of these other ones. Look at that. Marker, oil. Oh, that's nice. Let's do oil. No, no, no. Watercolour. That's a pentagon. And it's called a pentagon because it has five sides. So a shape with five sides is a pentagon. If all the sides are equal, it's called a regular pentagon. Again, if all the sides are equal length, it's a regular pentagon. But if they're just any old size, but there's five sides, that's just a normal pentagon. What about six sides? That would be, let's do it in red, that would be a hexagon. This would be a hexagon. Let's do it in a slightly different color. 
There we go, hexagon. Again, if all the sides were equal length, it would be a regular hexagon. But any side with six sides is called a hexagon. How about eight sides, as we can see down in the bottom left? That's called an octagon. That name might ring a bell because an octopus, for example, has eight legs. An octagon has eight sides. Finally, we have down at the base a decagon. And a decagon has ten sides. That name might be a little familiar because the word decade indicates ten years and a decagon indicates ten sides. But hang on a second, there's something weird going on here. What about months? December is the twelfth month. December equals the twelfth month. Yet you're talking here about ten sides. October is the tenth month. October equals the tenth month. But you're talking about octagon having eight sides. Same with November, which is like a nonagon, which has nine sides. But it's the eleventh month. Or September, a septagon has seven sides, but September is the ninth month. Uh, you know, have you noticed they're all up by two? They're all two more than what they what you might expect. The man responsible for this strange occurrence is none other than Julius Caesar. And what he did to confuse people for subsequent generations is he added two months. Can you guess which two months he added? He added July after himself and he added August with Augustus Caesar. And because of that insertion of two months, all the months thereafter were two more than what they should be. So while December is incorrectly now the twelfth month, a decagon is indeed ten sides and shapes are all named correctly.